Have you ever had a job stop on you partway through? For whatever reason. Um, data communication error, you bumped a stop switch, solar flares, who knows the reason that happened. Or did you forget to put an element in and you want to go back and add it in the same position? Well, today I'm going to show you a couple different options to try and recover the project. All right, so let's go into Lightburn and see what's got going on. So I'm using absolute coordinates here and I have my project framed up. I have an L fence so I know exactly where it is in relationship to the world. I've got my settings set. I'm not going to do a cutout because I'm working with a piece that's already round. But let's go ahead and start it. That's good. I'm focus. focused. That's good. Go on. And let's take a look at the camera. And it's running. Oh. <laughs> I had to set it 180 degrees from my first te my test run just to show this. So we'll show you how to fix it. I'm coming at it from top down, which is easy enough to do. And come back to the screen. So I go in here, and you see right here I've got it set for 180 degrees. So that's why it's starting at the top and working its way down. We go to recovery mode. I'm going to change this back to zero for recovery mode. It won't affect it now because it's already running. That's going to affect it for the next time. So let's go back to the screen. And I'll just pick a, a random spot to stop it. And it will come back up. And make it, make it connect. Now I'm going to stop it here in the middle of the word wait. You see it stopped. If you hit the pause button, you can recover the job. But because you hit the stop button, now it's got all kinds of errors saying, oh no. So since we started to burn at 180 degrees, it came from top down like this. We're going to switch it to zero degrees, which I've already done. And we're going to start at the bottom and work our way back up. And the trickiest part is stopping it exactly where the two halves meet up. If you stop it too soon, you're going to have a white mark in the middle where it's not burned. If you wait too long, you're going to have a spot where it's double burned. But depending on the project, that might be better than, than losing the entire thing. So let's start again from the bottom up. We'll go back to here, back to the laser. So now starting the bottom burning the line. And I just have to figure out when to stop it. And I'm going to hit the pause button and check and pause and check. And I paused it. And we resume. Since I'm sitting in the other room, I'm not having direct eyes on the laser. Let's see what that looks like. Looks like about one or two more seconds. And done. That should do it. Okay. Well, that worked out well. I'll show you, put a picture in here of the finished product so you can see how it's so close to perfect. I want to do this again and show you another method of how to do it. Okay, now we're going to use the same file. I'm starting from the bottom up. Like I should have done, the, you know, that, it doesn't really matter. Bottom up, top down, doesn't matter. I'm starting from the bottom up, and we're going to start it running. See, it's starting at the bottom. And then when this, uh, when I stop this, then we'll come back and I'll show you how to use the start from position. Okay, I'm going to hit the stop button now, and we're going to go out. We have to determine exactly where we're at in the burn. It's a little difficult for me to see without moving the camera and taking things out, but we're going to do our best to make it happen here. So, we have a file that failed. We have not moved anything on the, on the laser. It's still in the same position on the laser. 
So let's go to our preview button and we're going to back it, run it through. So we are somewhere around here where I stopped it. Because I don't want to have a, a blind spot, I'm going to back it up as much as I think is necessary. Then we use the start from here button. I can start job on laser from here or save job for running. We're just going to go ahead and start it from here. So click start and it's running again. So when we get done, we'll see if we have an overlap that's burned double or if we just have a, a white spot or if it looks beautiful. So we'll go ahead and let this finish out. And that's our second method for recovering a messed up job, a job that failed, failed in the middle somewhere. Okay, it's complete. So let's go get the, get the project out and take a look at it, see how it looks. And then we'll move on to the next method. Now I have a bamboo cutting board sitting on the laser. And we're going to put this um, kitchen conversion design on top of it. And I have it set up for user origin. And it's just sitting somewhere out in the middle of it. That's how I know how a lot of you work this way. You just I prefer to have a, a fence and get things absolute coordinates and, and definite positioning, but I know that's not how a lot of people work. So we're going to go ahead and run this and stop it. Then I'm going to take it off the laser bed and place it back in at a different position. And then we're going to use the print and cut method to locate the position of our board and determine exactly where we need to start, where it's, where it's at, and then we will use the start from here with the preview window to finish out the burn. I just hit the stop button and now we need to go back into light burn and I need to put some targets in for our print and cut procedure. So first I'm going to grab a circle and just make a nice small circle and we'll change that to, let's put it on layer 10. Okay, and then we need some crosshairs. I'm going to do my line, hit centered, click, center there, right click to get out of there. Click, shift, so it stays straight. Oop, hit the right click too soon. Shift, click, right click. Okay, I'm going to select that all and group that together. Now we have a target. Now we duplicate it. Okay, I'm bringing one. I'm going to zoom right in here and put it right on this lower corner of the four. And the other one, I'm going to run way over here on the other side and put it on the top corner of the L. So there's my two points for my print and cut. I'm going to turn that layer off just to make it easier to see what's going on. So now we Go to the Move tool, and we want to move the laser kind of in position. And let me just make that. Okay. And then I'm going to go out and rather than spending days moving the laser around, I'm going to go out and move my <clears throat> cutting board. So at this point right here, is right underneath the, where the laser beam is pointing. I'll turn the fire button on so I can see it. And then once we get that exactly where we need it, a little bit of fiddling. Okay, good. All right, then we come back in here to light burn and we go to laser tools, print and cut. Start wizard. So what I do is set our first target position. Oh, I got to select it first. 
once that, once that target is selected, then I can hit set. We have our first target position. Now here's the cool thing about this. I'm going to take, come right over here and click on that target and choose jog to selection. And it's going to move. And if I got everything close to where I need it, it should line right up. Okay, it's moved. Let me go out and take a look. Okay, pretty close. Let me move it just to switch to half a millimeter and just move it a couple times. And there. And that's right on. Okay, beautiful. So now we just click to set our second target position. Now we're placed with this option, scaled or not scaled. Because this is not a scaled, this is the original graphic we were using. Nothing's changed on the size of it. We want to use no scaling. Now if you look over here, you see it says ready, print and cut, unscaled. So now that that's all set, let me go close the door, lid on the laser, and get the camera set back up again. And then we'll just hit the start button. All right, that's finished. Now let's move the laser head out of the way, take a look and see how what we ended up with here. Pardon the moving around with the camera, but I don't have another one handy. Okay, you can see right there in the bottom of the word gallon, there's a little space that we missed. So let's go back in and fix it. Now, since we have just a little space that we missed right here, go back to my preview and back it up. We don't need the outer part on anymore. I'm going to zoom in so I can get a better look. Okay. Let's back it up. Just to be sure, I'm going to go where I just don't have those. See where we get the bottom of the Q or the G and the O. So that's that's kind of sexual mission right there. I'll just go right there. It's going to be close enough. All right, and then we'll do start here. And again, start job from laser. And we only need to let it run for just a few seconds. And stop. Okay. I think that did it. Let's go take a look. Well, if you look closely, you can see it doesn't line up quite perfectly. It's a little bit of slop in my laser. That's, I think, is what caused that issue. But otherwise, rather than throwing the entire project out, I was able to salvage it and so now you have three different ways that you can restore, recover, salvage, whatever you want to call it, a project that has stopped unexpectedly and or perhaps even if you had forgot to turn one layer on and you had to come back and add that extra layer in. I mean the best case scenario is that you don't move anything off the laser bed. But if you do, you do still have the print and cut feature as an option. 
And one of the keys I'll say there is you want to make sure that your targets are as far apart from each other, preferably somewhat diagonal. That'll help with the alignment as best as possible. If they're, really, if they're close together, you don't get near as good of an alignment. There's too much margin of error to make that happen. So, hope you found this video very useful for you. I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, if you subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you soon.